Well, it's RV maintenance time again. We have been in the same location for about a month now, and we're almost finished up with all of our RV maintenance and organization stuff. This is a continuation of last week's video where we did RV maintenance and organization. And I wanted to let you know that everything that we use in this week's video and in last week's video for all of our maintenance and all of our organization, we'll leave links in the description. So if you want to use some of those items, you can find them down there. Well, let's get going. Next little piece of maintenance we're going to do is we're going to recharge our on-the-go water softener. We have one of the smaller ones. We don't have the ginormous one. The reason we did that was for storage purposes. They both work exactly the same, but you don't have to recharge the bigger one as often, but it's not that big of an inconvenience to recharge. We recharge ours probably once every four to five weeks, kind of depending on how the water is where we are. And if the water is harder, you have to do it a little bit more often. About four to five weeks is, is standard. That's when we'll start seeing those little like white hard water stains start showing up in our stainless steel sinks and in our shower doors and stuff like that. So that will give me an indication that it's time to recharge this. Super easy to recharge. Let me show you how to do it. First thing we're gonna do is cut off the water source and then we are going to disconnect this from the RV. We're gonna empty the water out of the on the go water softener. And then we are going to take the top lid off and we are going to put in some salt. Just get you one of these 26 ounce Morton iodized salt and it doesn't have to be iodized. It can be non iodized if you want It doesn't have to be iodized and this most of this is going to go in there now If you get the, the big water softener, you'll need two of these but for us. We just need one One of the ways that you can tell if you've rinsed thoroughly enough Is to just taste it if it tastes salty then uh you probably need to rinse a little bit more, but if it tastes clear and fresh, then uh, you should be good. Drinking water from the hose, just like a kid. Now, this is not directly from the hose. Um, I don't mind drinking this, and I'm a water snob, but I don't mind drinking this and testing out this way because it's already been filtered through our Blue Tech water filtration system. So I know that as long as the salt is gone from the on-the-go water softener, then it's going to be good taste in water. Thank you to the sponsor of today's video, RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. We all know that the mattresses that come in RVs are anything but comfortable. Correct. And probably one of the first things that you're going to want to change out mm -hmm. in your RV. So RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding has a ton of different styles, a bunch of different sizes that fit all perfectly in your RV, different firmness levels. So no matter what kind of sleeper you are, RV Mattress will have the perfect mattress for you. They come with a 120 night sleep trial, a 10 year warranty, free shipping, and best of all, they're made here in the USA. Yeah, it's not just mattresses. No. It's accessories. And Leslie Love loves accessories. Yes. Uh, they have pillows, they have sheets, blankets, mm. mattress protectors. We use the pillows and love the pillows. Love them. As much as the mattress, yes. honestly. Um, we use the sheets. Our daughter uses one of their weighted blankets yep. and, and we love them. Um, we'll leave a link in the description. So if you're in the market for a new mattress for your RV, pop over to RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding and get this. We can save you 25%. That's right. All you gotta do is use our promo code WAGS and check out before you leave. One of the most important maintenance items that we're going to be doing while we're here is installing a new backup camera. Our backup camera, we had the Fury on and it worked fine. We had it for two years in the Montana, switched it over to the Alliance and we've had it for two years in the Alliance and it's worked great up until now. Uh, the footage is just really, really cloudy. The camera really clouded up and then the monitor just completely stopped working. So we're going to install the Halo View BT7 today. And the first thing when you open this package, BAM! big ass monitor <laughs> we never really used our backup camera to back in so i think this big monitor is gonna allow us to utilize it for what it's intended for which is actually helping you back into your spot we had that such a small monitor before and it was so distorted and your orientation wasn't really great so we didn't use it for backing up we used it like as a rear view mirror which it worked fine for because you could tell when people were alongside you, you could tell when the rear of your, your RV was cleared and their vehicle so you could get over. And then when we had the e-bikes and had the rack on the back, I even kicked it down a little bit so we could watch the e-bikes. So if anything happened, we would know from inside the cab. Um, so we'll install this and we'll see how it works. 
Now I'm not gonna run you through the whole install process because for us, it is so easy, it would be stupid for me to even show you because our holes in the back already line up, the screw holes, and ours is already prepped. So it really is literally unscrewing four screws, unplugging the old camera, plugging the new camera into the port, and putting the four screws back in. The hardest part I had with this whole thing was the adapters where the cords plug into each other on the new Halo View are big and fat. And they weren't like that on the Furion. So what I had to do was I had to dig out some of that styrofoam out of there. So I give myself enough room to stick those, those big things inside. So um, other than that, it was super, super easy. Leslie just got back and just pulled in. So now I'm gonna take the monitor and I'm gonna pair it to the camera and hopefully this thing will work really well. This was ridiculously easy. I didn't even have to pair it. I turn the truck on, I click on the uh, camera button inside the rig and uh, turn the power on this monitor and it was already showing out the back of the rig. So I didn't even have to like do any work to pair it. It was, it was automatic. We weren't happy with their mounting options that they had in theirs. Uh, they had one that was just like a 3M thing that sticks on the dash and then they had another little mounting bracket and I really don't even know how that how that works but um so what we did was we have a suction cup that has a magnet on the back of it and because the back panel on this monitor is metal uh it just sticks it just sticks there but we wanted to jump forward in the video a little bit to talk about this halo view while we're actually using it in real time and to be honest i was a little skeptical because this screen is ginormous but i was like man this thing's gonna take up the whole windshield i'm not gonna be able to see what i'm doing but i actually really really like it um we traveled for the first day with it yesterday, and the reason we didn't film it yesterday, we've got a couple of things to work out. So this thing out of the box, default, the image was mirrored. So when someone passed me on this side, it looked like they were passing me on the shoulder. So I was like, holy crap, somebody's passed me on the shoulder, but it wasn't, it was just flip-flopped. But there's something in the menu, you go in there and you change that, and it's fine. And then we were also worried about the range of this thing because it does say that it could get pixelated and could drop signal if your antennas on the back where the camera is mounted aren't high enough. So ours is, ours is mounted pretty close to the top, so we haven't had any signal issues. But if you do have signal issues and yours is mounted a little lower, they do sell an extender and it's not that expensive. Um, but this thing uh, so far has been really good. I can actually see way far behind us. We did have to adjust it a little bit uh, manually on the outside too because by default it was clicked too far down and we were just seeing like directly behind us uh, but we clicked it one notch up and now I can see everything behind me we will leave a link in the description uh, for the Halo View BT7 there's other models of this too so if this one doesn't work right for you there's ones that mount to your rear view there's other ones that you can use but uh, pop over to their website check it out we can save you 10% use the promo code waywardwags and no matter which Halo View that you select you can save 10% well, this is not really a maintenance item, but it's something really cool that we wanted to show you. And our door would never stay open all the way. The wind would blow and it's, it's tension. So it's supposed to stay open based on the tension in the hinges, but it doesn't. So we had to get these and we got these on Amazon. And this is just a little magnet piece. It's got 3M adhesive on one side. We stick it over here. This is one side of the magnet. And then the other side goes over here on the door. And then so when you close your door, they stick together via magnet and the door stays open. And it's worked like a charm so far. And they're only a few bucks on Amazon. I'll leave the link in the description. The next little piece of maintenance that we gotta do is on our batteries. We don't have the fancy lithium batteries like most RV YouTubers do, because we don't do boondocking. So we just have the regular old lead acid batteries, the RV Marine battery that came with the RV. So we have to do a little bit of maintenance on that. So part of that maintenance is just making sure that your the posts are in good shape, not a lot of corrosion or buildup. If you do have that, you can just take a wire brush and clean that off. Take a little warm water with a rag, wipe all that stuff off and make sure that those are cleaned up and good. Make sure there's no signs of any damage to the battery, any cracks, because in the cold weather, that stuff can happen. You can get cracks or just bouncing around. It can crack open. If you get a crack, it'll it'll cause a whole bunch of issues in here. So we're going to make sure that's good. And the next thing you need to do is check the water level. So we got to check the water level and make sure that there's enough cells in there to keep this battery alive. It's not like a lithium battery. You can't just let this thing go and not do anything to it and just hope that it's going to be okay. Cross your fingers. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to check the, the water levels on it today. We checked the post. The post looked good. I did an inspection of the battery itself. The battery itself looks great. I recommend that before you do any battery maintenance, you make sure that your battery switch is 
turned off and you have that unplugged so that you're not getting any juice to your battery. You don't want to be fiddling around in there while there's still some electricity flowing into that bad boy. So we're going to check the water level. And so when the water level is a little bit low, we have to take a little bit of distilled water and it doesn't matter the brand as long as it's distilled water. And then you'll need one of these little guys. And this is a battery filler. It looks like one of those little ear cleaner things. So uh, I don't recommend you cleaning your ears with this. <laughs> So what you'll do is you'll just take a little bit of this, uh, get some water out of there, and then you'll just drop it into the cells. There's a little fill line in here in your battery. It'll tell you exactly where to fill that water up to. And then once you get done with that, you just connect your battery back up and you're good to go. Today, we're going to do a little strutting. Yeah. We're do a little strut. <laughs> now we're doing a little strut work. We, um, we did replace the struts on the bed. Yes, we did. Once. Because the struts that come in the rv are fine for the mattress that comes in the rv yes but when we upgraded to the rv mattress by brooklyn bedding mm -hmm. it's a little heavier just a tad so we upgraded to the 150 pound struts yeah I thought and that'd be plenty because we went to the 150 pound struts we had to reinforce it so with the old struts the original factory struts it was only like a little two by two that was yeah. that they screwed into yeah. Wider so yeah piece. we had to get a, a bigger piece of wood i think we did two by four, two by four. that we did the new struts well, 150 pounds will hold the bed up, but just, just barely. barely. And I'm afraid we're we're very untrusting. Yeah. You <laughs> one, one knock. Yeah. You might come down. So you're like way off in there, getting your winter clothes <laughs> in the back, and barely hit the thing, and 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 you live in, under the bed now. <laughs> so we upgraded to the 200 pound struts. Yes. And I'm gonna put those on, so I won't have to do any extra work. I don't think. No. Um, because I already Should did the reinforcement with the two by four. Yeah. So we just undo the 150 pound struts, mm -hmm. put on the 200 pound struts. And these were not very expensive. No. And we found them on Amazon. So mm -hmm. easy fix, couple screws and we'll knock this out. So, um, yeah. but we will put, um, some reinforcement up under the bed to keep it open while I'm in there working. Yes. Just so I don't get mushed. <laughs> we will prop it and I will hold it just yeah. to be safe. But it shouldn't take too long. No, it should be a quick swap out. Looks like the brackets that they sent us are the exact same brackets, so I won't have to do any of that. I won't have to go screwing into the 2x4 or the sidewall of the bed frame. Really just have to undo the nuts on this bracket, take that out, and just replace the old strut with the new strut. So this is going to be actually easier than I thought it was going to be. Alright, give it a try. Alright. <laughs> no hands. I didn't have to get down and lift. <laughs> and it stays. Yes. And you can even like Bump it. tap on it and it's not going to fall. Yes. <laughs> All right, today we're going to do a project, part of our maintenance that I put off for as long as possible, but we have to do it from time to time because it's important. And that's we're going to check all the seals, all the sealant on the whole RV. And uh, if there's an issue with any of the seals or any of the silicone anywhere, we're going to remove that silicone and put some new silicone down. So I got my silicone removing tool. That's to scrape off the old sealant. You don't want to have the old one on there because the old doesn't adhere to the new unless you have certain types of sealant, but the type of sealant we have doesn't adhere to other silicones. So you have to get that old stuff out before you get the new stuff in. And we're using the ProFlex RV sealant for ours today. And then on the roof, we're using the self-leveling lap sealant uh it's a totally different thing and that's for if you know around your skylight fixtures around your air conditioners if there's any kind of a uh, uh, hole or uh, break in the barrier there you put this stuff down there and it kind of just self levels and, and adheres and fills in all the holes and the gaps so you'll need all that stuff and then you'll need of course you'll need your silicone gun yeah it's all from one slide after you get done removing all the existing sealant make sure you clean it up real good you want to clear of dirt and debris before you start putting on the new silicone because it'll actually adhere to that dirt it won't cause a good seal and then you'll get moisture and more dirt and stuff in there that you don't want in there if you're like us and you suck at putting on sealant and it's just going to be a smeared mess everywhere then you'll have to tape it off uh, which we did with masking tape taped off on top and bottom that way we can smear it as much as we want, get the ceiling in there as much as we want, smear it all over the tape, and then when we pull the tape off, it'll just be one little nice, neat stream of ceiling. Now it's time to check the roof. I don't think I'm gonna have to do anything up here, but I'm gonna check it anyway. I just did this probably, I don't know, six, eight months ago, 
checked everything up here to make sure everything was good. And you can even see some of the spots where the last time I put on the self-leveling because it's a little bit brighter than where it came from the factory. So as you put more layers of the self-leveling stuff on the, on the roof, you can kind of see where the last time you did it. And, uh, but you don't want to get caught up in that. You want to look for new stuff. You want to look for stuff in the original sealant that may have cracked between the time you did it and now so that you can go ahead and patch those up also. Little cracks in the sealant or what I call like hairline cracks in the surface of the sealant is not a bad thing. So it'll be really dirty. You'll see these cracks that are really bright and white. That just means that surface level cracks, there's no water intrusion getting in there or anything. You don't have to cover all of that up with more self-leveling sealant. Um, but if you do have any bubbling or any gaps or holes or you know bubbles that have bubbled up and popped you definitely want to get some sealant back on top of those so you don't get water intrusion inside your rig like for example the last time we came up here and i sealed i had on our skylight that goes into our shower um, you know part of that little plastic part had just bubbled up and it when it bubbled up it caused the sealant to bubble up also which caused the gap in there so we just threw down some more self-leveling and you can tell the difference in the color from where i did that last time and where the sealant was put in on the factory but um, just, you know, every six months or so, just get up on your roof and look for all these things. All right, we got a little spot back here on the back side of the RV, right where the back wall is. And just, I think this was like a little bubble that had, that had popped. And it doesn't look bad, but I'm gonna throw some sealant on it just in case. There's another one up here at the front. It doesn't look bad either, but again, better safe than sorry. Now you can take a glob you just take some out of the top and run your finger across there, however you want to do it. I just took some out of the top and smeared it over the top of there just to make it look a little bit more pretty. Because last time I did, I just, just shot it out of there and just let it self-level. But, um, and you can do that too. It's fine. Just aesthetically. And when Leslie gets up here and washes the roof, she can be like, why didn't you just squirt it on there? Why didn't you make it look pretty? Well, that's it. Again. For now. For RV maintenance and organization. <laughs> yeah. Not a fan. No, you're not. Not a fan. I recommend switching rigs every couple of years. Or like, you ain't got to fool with it. It's ideal. <laughs> <laughs> and when you can't do that, you got to do maintenance. Yeah. So it's one of those um, necessary evils. Yes. But hey, everything that we've used in this video, tools wise, product wise, we'll have links in the description in case you want to use any of this stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, stick around for a few seconds. We're going to honor a fallen hero. If you want to get involved with helping us help veterans, Everything you need to know is right down in the description of the video also. Appreciate you watching. See you next time. Bye. Bye.